A tiny dot in this vast universe of ours, the black hole. Of course, this is the view seen from 275,000 light seconds away. In 1969, John Wheeler gave the name black hole. The basic idea was given in 1783 by John Mitchell, who said if a star is sufficiently massive, it would have such a gravitational field that even light could not escape it. Let's talk about the life cycle of a star. When large amount of gas starts to collapse on itself due to gravitational attraction, the gas heats up. Eventually, the star runs out of hydrogen, starts to cool down and hence contracts. An Indian graduate student by the name of Subramanyam Chandrasekhar came up with a very interesting hypothesis. If the mass of the star would be less than one and a half times the mass of our sun, popularly known as the Chandrasekhar limit, then the star would become a white dwarf. If the mass of the star is greater than the Chandrasekhar limit, the star won't be able to support itself. Eventually, the star will shrink to a certain critical radius such that light cones, which are the path followed by space-time, will not be able to escape the gravity of the star. A black hole is always surrounded by an event horizon which is popularly known as the point of no return since light cannot come back from this point. Black holes always radiate Hawking radiation named after Stephen Hawking. These are electromagnetic radiations. At the end, the black hole is considered to be a singularity. The entire mass of the black hole is condensed at this point and space, time and the laws of the universe have no meaning here. The largest known black hole is the S50014 plus 81, which is 40 billion times the mass of our Sun and has a diameter of 47 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun in the solar system. It is believed that there is a black hole at the center of every major galaxy. Sagittarius is believed to be the black hole in the center of the Milky Way, having a mass 40 million times that of the Sun. Now comes the question. What happens if you're wandering in space and are near a black hole? You have two options. So, number one, you try to escape. Remember Einstein? You cannot move faster than light, so there is actually no escape to the black hole. Say you end up falling into the black hole. You have two choices. Either you go for a quick death or a slow, painful one. Let's say a quick death it is, then you need to hope and pray for a smaller black hole because the closer you are to the singularity, the faster you're going to die. When you're inside this black hole, the upper part of your body will experience less gravitational force as compared to the lower part of your body which is going to experience more. So you're basically going to split in two. What a great way to go. Say a slow painful death is what you want, then you need a bigger black hole. Here the gravitational force on your head and legs will be almost the same. But you are not going to survive. When you are falling into this black hole, you will see the universe fast forward in front of your eyes. Say you have a friend who is near the black hole. He will see you gradually going towards the black hole until you finally freeze near the event horizon. This is because what happens next? The light from you will not be able to reach the eyes of your friend and for that friend you will forever be frozen at the event horizon. Thus you basically froze time. I would like to thank my newest subscriber Bedguru for giving me some amazing video suggestions. Also to all these people who gave me so much love in the comments down below. If you want a shout out Suggest some videos and scientific concepts that you would like to see me talk about down in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.